What's up everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. In the last episode, we beat that tutorial, including Vanguard, the guardian of the tutorial, and we got punched to death by Dragon God, so now we are here in the Nexus. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for Demon Souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the arch stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed boletaria. So the Nexus is where we are now. It binds our soul when we die. And you saw it in one of the opening cutscenes, it acts as our hub world, and the five archstones will give us passage to the game's various levels. And the Nexus also houses our NPC buddies, like the jerk-off blue phantom back there. And you here? Do you hear for my services? My name's Baldwin. Just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. I'll forge ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, huh? The Nexus also you're serves to... I can tell you, not get all... I guess I'm imprison the old one? The and this came. is just stockpile, I Thomas. Know what hit me. Does he have anything to, important to say? I Let's find out. here, in the Nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. Ah, right. Thomas and his, his wife and daughter. I think there's an event that goes along with that. I can't quite remember. Um, so I was saying that that the old one is beneath the Nexus. And of course, the old one's awakening triggered the colorless fog to spread across the land. And with the fog came the demons who gather the souls for his insatiable appetite. I was talking about before how this game is... It's an action RPG, but it's also a horror game. And having a Lovecraftian naming convention like the old one for the big baddie certainly contributes to that in my mind. And we have uh, that little cutscene with the dragon, the red dragon, to welcome us to world 1-1 one -one of the Bulletari- or world 1-1, one the Bulletarian Palace. And you're gonna hear that little shorthand a lot. So, the archstones connect you to the five playable worlds. The five intact archstones, I should say. There's an overarching story, but each world has its own little self-contained narrative and its own unique themes and enemies and its own events and I'll talk more about all of that in due time but that shorthand just refers to the world and the level within the world so since this is level one of the first world it is world 1-1 level one of the fourth world would be 4-1 or 4-1 so you might notice that my health has been cut in half since the tutorial, since we were killed by Dragon God and sent back to the Nexus where our soul remains trapped. We are in what's known as soul form right now, and in soul form our health is locked at 50%. There is an item we will get in this level that will, when equipped, equip our maximum HP in soul form, I think up to... It might be 66%? I'm not quite sure about that. It's higher than 50. 
Also, while in soul form, we get a minor damage boost. It's nothing crazy. It certainly doesn't make up for the fact that you have half the, that the health is normal. But it's uh, it's not bad. And these enemies behind the palisades are just draglings. They're nothing to be too concerned with. Though they can, they can gang up on you later on in the level. And you see there's a little item glow behind the gate there. We can't get to that quite yet. We have to open the gate up from the other side and that'll come uh, much later in the level. Don't jump down that pit where it looks like swirls are swirling, ar swirling around. You will, uh, you will just die. It's not great. Is he running against the wall? Stupid archer. You know nothing. Man, the halberd. The halberd is really, really kind of clumsy. I don't- I like the wide arc of the swing, but at the same time, it seems like it's gonna glance off the walls a lot like it did back there. And here is the very first trap of the game. The little bastard naked dragling standing behind the corner, just waiting for you to run stupidly past him. And then his buddy here jumps out at you once you're in the room. And I will absolutely, absolutely never forget this one dragling right here, simple little enemy. Because the first time I played it, probably like everyone, just ran in the room not thinking, and got stabbed in the back. Not backstab, that's a separate uh, combat mechanic. So I guess I should talk about the combat since I rambled through the tutorial where it explains all of that. The combat is insanely elegant. And I love the system it sets up. So, everything you do is tied to that quickly refilling stamina gauge, the green one. You have a dodge roll, you have um, an R1 and an R2, a light and a strong attack. See the dodge roll, that. You can bash with your shield or deflect with it, uh, also known as parrying, which is always such an amazing system. Parries are always good, always good. Absolutely always good. It doesn't matter how the parry is set up, it's like, there's never, I, can you think of a, a bad parry? No, absolutely not. I'm saying absolutely a lot. I absolutely should stop that. <laughs> um, is the boulder up here? No, it's not. So yeah, you have all that tied to your stamina gauge. It refills fairly quickly. Blocking also costs stamina, and depending on the damage that the attack would have done or how hard the swing coming at you is, it will cost more stamina to block. So the way parrying works is that if you tap L2 at the last minute before an attack hits, you will deflect the attack and you will open the enemy up so that if you hit R1 as a follow-up, you will do a special, uh, repost animation. And of course there's also backstabbing, which I don't think all weapons can do, most of them can. You have a very specific angle that you have to be behind enemies in order to stab them in the back. So something that makes this playthrough kind of daunting is that this game is really, really dense. Like, Bayonetta was, it was brimming with, with depth and minutia and things to talk about. But that pales in comparison to the sheer amount of stuff to talk about here. Uh, lore, backstory, narrative elements, almost all of which aren't explicit. System secrets, traps up here like the boulder. Where is it? Yeah. Everybody who plays this game gets crushed by the boulder the first time. It's inevitable. I like that the traps aren't... They're very rarely lethal. They're meant to fuck you up, and they'll kill you if you if you face them at low health. But very rarely will uh, traps ever just flat out kill you. They're very rarely fatal. Uh, what was I saying? Um, let's see, the... the 
there are a lot of systems, there are tons and tons of secrets and events, and just, um, very kind of obscure, esoteric mechanics that, again, aren't explained. And blue eyes up here. I just want to make sure that he doesn't get to eat grass. The grass, by the way, heals you, and at low health, the knights will eat grass. Luckily, I got a one-two strike on him. Now we can proceed in one of two different directions. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's a lot to explain, so I'm gonna try to take it gradually and not worry too much about front-loading all of that information because I will just choke on all of it and not do a very good job explaining things. Luckily, the game is easily long enough that every aspect of the game can have its time in the spotlight. Like, I can, I can pay deserved attention to each aspect of the game. Oh god, the polearm... They're not draglings. What are these guys? They look like the character from Mortal Kombat, and I can't remember his name. Not Liu Kang. Oh, what was the other guy's name? The guy with the hat. Shit, that's gonna drive me nuts. He was... Um... Was it? Was he Lu one of Liu Kang's friends? Oh my god, why can't I remember his name? Anyway, if you come back here, you come upon... Let's see, you'll see in just a second... The Red Eyes Knight across the bridge there. That message that popped up... Beginners should try this area later. It's, uh, it's good advice. The Red Eyes Knight, at this point in the game, will one-shot you if you screw the fight up. It's perfectly possible to kill him at this point. It's not worth risking it, though. <laughs> he will just kill you. If you, uh, if you screw up just a little bit. That, and he takes too long to kill right now anyway. Because enemies... Their, uh, enemies don't scale with you. So, we will come back for him later when we are a little bit better prepared for that fight. Um, that idiot! He blew himself up. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. So, they're also stupid in another way, in that you can trick them into doing their lunge attack and they'll just jump to their deaths. And down here, you break uh, these two chains. And if you notice, this is above the starting area. When you go forward and you reach the fork before the big gate, and when you go left at the fork, you go up another set of stairs, It, those two chains, when broken, drop a few items in front of that area. And we'll just go back for them in a... Uh, in a little bit, because we'll wind up back at that big gate by the end of this level anyway. Oh, so I was saying, um, the game is full of secrets and events. Like, not explicit side quests like you might normally see in an RPG. Oh god. Hold on. I'm gonna forego that explanation here. Because I want to not talk. No! Shit! Shit. That was not smart. Because my... My goddamn halberd started glancing off the wall, so I got nervous and started backing up to find a better position to fight in, but I broke the lock on and wound up running with my back towards the enemies, and you just never do that. So shit. This is what- this is the other thing that happens when you die. You start back at the beginning of the level with all of the enemies respawned and no souls. So, I'm gonna- I'm just gonna cut ahead to this- to me recovering my body. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, um... When I edit the video moments ago, is that you get a, a old ragged robes there and a jade hair ornament, which you can trade to an NPC in World 4-1 for, I think, one of two I possible items. Okay, and we are back. So this is the other effect of dying. You see, you lose your souls, and then you have to make your way back to the spot you died to touch your blood stain to recover those souls. 
It's a bit like how in Diablo 2 when you died, you'd wind up back in town naked and you'd have to run to your corpse and click on it to get your equipment back. But if you die again before reaching your body, those souls are gone and you get a new blood stain in the most recent place you died. Uh, your health also gets locked to 50% when you... Oh, I already explained that. Yeah. So if you've already recovered your body, you're... You, if you've recovered your body, you you still have 50% health. You only get your health back when you've killed a major demon, which is one of the, the main bosses in each world. And then if you die again, you get sent back to 50% health in soul form. So, that's, uh, when I say the game is very punishing, that's what I mean. Also, I forgot to explain back there, when I got the old Ragged set and the Jade of Hero ornament, the, the old Raggedy set is, uh, only for females in this game. Also, I can jump down the, the, um, battlements here. The guy thought he was gonna trap me again. Again. Clearly indicating that I've fallen for this more than once. I could have jumped down the battlements back there, and I would have reached a little scaffolding where I could pick up a ring called the Thief's Ring that makes me harder for enemies to detect, but I'm just gonna get that on another pass when I come back to this area later. So, keep that in mind, and if you smash through the palisades here, you get to the Dregling Merchant. And I don't remember if he has anything special that I want to buy from him at this point. Nope, just some grass, some lotus, firebombs. I have no bow, so I can't really use the arrows right now. Is he even... No, he's only selling bolts. Yeah, and some, uh, some armor that I already have. Oh, speaking of the armor, I should explain why I'm running around uh, with no pants on. It's because I represent the Order of the Pantsless Knights. The elite guard of Boletaria. No, actually, it's um, it's because of something I was talking about in the last episode. That I didn't go into much detail about it. Uh, when I was talking about what the different stats do, specifically endurance and vitality, they affect your endurance and vitality, your equip burden and your item burden, respectively. So your item burden is just the amount of stuff you can have in your bags, the maximum weight, and that's increased by your vitality. Your equipment burden is the maximum weight of the stuff that you can have equipped. And if you have less, th if you've used less than half of your equipment burden, then you roll much faster. And conversely, if you have more than 50% of your item burden, if you're over 50%, I should say, you roll very, very slowly. And I want to be as nimble as possible, so I want to keep myself below that threshold. I think the actual formula is something like, um, you want your, your combined equip weight to, equipment weight to be less than half of your endurance plus 29, I think it is. It's 29 or 39. 39 sounds too high. Up here, there's another blue knight. I don't think this is the dangerous one. No, he's not. He's just another pussy. It's fine. Oh, he put his shield up and was therefore not susceptible to fire. These guys seem to really take a lot of damage from firebombs. Come on. Shit, he got the grass off. What I always try to do is... Because you only do, like, one or two damage when they have their shields up. Uh-oh. Ooh. Hold on. Shit, shit, shit. I'm backed into a corner. I want to get out of here. Okay. Now I feel okay. So what I want to do against blue knights... If I'm not feeling, uh, bold enough to parry them is I want to just wail away at them when they get low on health because eventually they're going to put their shield down to eat the grass. But sometimes that backfires because they don't always start eating as soon as they hit low health. Sometimes they will just add an extra attack in. 
and that usually gets me a little bit hurt. And the archer is a little punk who just falls off when you hit him. No big deal there. Oh, also, I should mention, you recover stam uh, stamina more slowly while your shield is raised. So if you're... If you're not... Actively trying to block something, it's better to just keep it down until your stamina is refilled. And instead of going forward uh, through the fog gate we just opened up, we're going to go down here and start, uh, I guess, a side... Oh, shit! Oh! It hit all four of them! Man, that makes the halberd almost... The halberd... The, the Herbert. It makes the halberd almost worth it! I like that. That's pretty good. That is a really wide arc, man. Shit, what was I in the middle of saying? Oh, it's all falling apart. The wolves that are all... The will... The Having like... A seizure. Let's just start that over with... So we come down here, and... I am deathly afraid of one of these guys being a torch-bearing dragling. And... Since this area is littered with explosive barrels, just one of those will set off a huge chain reaction that will probably get me killed. So, just wanted to make sure that nothing like that was going to happen. And I'm at half of my maximum half health, which is not a fun feeling at all. Um... Oh my god! Oh! Somehow I hit left on the D-pad and, and unequip my shield. Fuck! Murphy's Law is in effect. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. I guess the Spelunky Curse is also still in effect. If I think I'm doing well, it'll get worse. It'll go worse. Let's see, I think there's like only one or two more places to clear out to get to the person I would like to get to. And so many draglings. The enemy, the, the enemy variety really opens up later on. Oh, I think I wanted to talk about the Harvard. Because I already said it felt kind of clumsy. Man. No, it couldn't have been that, because I was talking about it before I got that awesome four hit. Oh, so I've never, uh, I've never used a Temple Knight before, and it's just now occurring to me. Oh, wait, another Blue Eyes Knight. <gasps> oh, shit! This is the one with the two-hander. Okay, that's that's pretty dangerous. That's really dangerous, actually. Um, shit. Cause like like I was saying, harder hits take more stamina when you block. And he can do I think up to three hits in a row, that will almost definitely deplete my stamina. I'm really low on health. This guy is wrecking me. I need to just, like, focus for a second. Or play really lame. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When in doubt, play like a bitch. So I've never, uh, I've never bothered to make a Temple Knight before. And I've also never bothered with pole arms except for the occasional spear. And I don't like how slow it is. I definitely don't like that, but the reach and the arc of the swing seem really handy. And it's it's just really tight spaces that make that big arc a liability because it glances off the wall. Spears, by the way, are awesome because you can attack with them while your shield is raised, which you cannot do with the halberd. And my class pick was totally arbitrary. I'm going to wind up building some kind of sword user. But for now, I'm kind of stuck with the halberd because not much I can do in here. Here is a Strava. Help me. I am trapped. So while we clear Surrounded these uh, weak little draglings out, oh, oh shit! Let's uh, let him destroy that. I'll just wait out here in the hallway. Weapons, by the way, have all sorts of different properties. Like they deal multiple types of damage. Uh, there's blunt, slashing, piercing. What's the fourth one? Normal. Normal, right? 
and they all scale with, with stats differently. Like, one weapon's damage scales with luck, there are two that scale with faith. My thanks for your brave rescue. I am Ostrava of Boletaria. Accept this as a token of my gratitude. Crescent weapons scale with magic, and that brass telescope just lets us equip it and zoom in on stuff. Kind of like binoculars, but a telescope. <laughs> um, oh god. Uh, dex and strength are the main uh, scaling attributes, though, like the most common ones. The weapons also have all different move sets too. Some of them have uh, have have their own combos. Some of them have unique attacks when you use them after rolling, and they tend to all have different R1 and R2 attacks. Some thrust, some do slashing motions. It's all pretty varied, and so we're just gonna kill this guy up here, and then I'll kind of uh, explain what the Astrava thing back there was all about in the next episode because. I think Bulletarian, the Bulletarian Palace 1-1 one, one should be about two episodes, so yeah. We'll get into that in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one.